Okay, so I'm Rick Sellens. I'm here in uh, the Integrated Learning Center looking at the 215 labs with uh, the TAs. Mohammed has done this lab several times before. And Robert, how about you? Just once, but you know. Just once, but you're getting there, right? Now the students need to be careful not to spill that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. it'll stain your shirt mm -hmm. and make a mess and then you'll have bubbles in the manometer and you'll get bad results. Now we'll look at the process for making your measurements. Use the multimeter to make sure the power supply is set to 12 volts. Connect the plus 12 to the red terminal and the ground to the black terminal. Connect the pressure transducer signal output to the input of the digital data acquisition system. The tubes are connected to opposite sides of the differential pressure transducer to apply air pressure. Yeah. That's looking like one quarter of an inch. Yeah, even if you just sort of press it with your fingers, I think it'll work well. Good. Getting a pretty high pressure there. Yeah. Okay. So, for the first part of the experiment, they have to find the uh, linear I mean, equation for the uh, pressure versus voltage. So what I, we ask them to do is for each transducer at vertical position of manometer, they have to draw that um, uh, I mean graph for the pressure versus voltage with five points, error bars for each point, and a uh, line set. And they have to provide the equation for that line uh, with those the average error bars or something like that in, inside the equation. So that in that way they have calibrated each transducer so at the later time at each voltage they can find the pressure from that line set. Yeah, yeah there you go. So I started from started there and something and, and tried to hold it there. Okay. So you've got some problems here with it going one step at a time. That's the digital resolution of the device, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why you might get a better answer on the multimeter if you're trying to calibrate. Okay, now you're attaching that onto the hose there. Yeah. Exactly. And of course, every time we squeeze it, it yeah. goes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to squeeze it way up and then let it go. And it goes down and up and down and up down a bit. Oh, and he squeezed it again. Okay, that looks like a second order response, doesn't it? Like a mass spring damper system. Push the button. And the level goes down. And I didn't see anything happen on the manometer. One of them has to... So what happens here? The pressure goes up because it's the sudden... So right now we're measuring the pressure here at this location in the pipe. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty close to the output pressure of the vacuum cleaner, right? Yeah. And then it goes around the corner here and there'll be friction losses in the pipe and some minor losses in the bends because of the secondary flows in there. Exactly. And then comes along here so the pressure here should be lower. Exactly. And do we see that when you measure? Yeah. Oh, good. And then we go around here and we get more minor losses and more mm -hmm. friction losses and we get to here. And then we go through a sudden expansion and the pressure yeah. here is nearly atmospheric. Yeah, and the outer is atmosphere, which is the close to here. Okay, that and that's, is not that much. oh yeah, that's wide open at the end there, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, they measure, they have five points to measure the pressure at same frequency at the beginning, which is 1,000, 1 kilohertz. 
and for 10 seconds. So you're going to start it recording and then you're going to turn on the vacuum cleaner. Okay, are we sure that... Oh yeah, I guess it did get up to steady. You've done this yeah. before, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. So it was steady down at about 1.475 and then it rose up pretty quickly to a pretty stable level there. And then it came down more slowly. So all of that is happening way more slowly than the response we saw in the transducer before, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 